Hi, I'm Zach, a tech manager here at Clive Coffee. Today we're going to be working with the M58. Um, we're specifically going to be doing the E61 rebuild. The E61 rebuild will be generally done within a three to five year maintenance plan. Um, it's just kind of generally when we've seen these gaskets wear down. Um, so that would be the suggestion based off of the age of your machine. Uh, that will change to just depending on your water quality as well. Um, so the parts that we're going to be replacing is the uh, camshaft, the pre-infusion valve, the top brew valve, the drain valve, two camshaft gaskets, one uh, Teflon cap, three large Teflon gaskets, and an E61 cap filter. Uh, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is uh, take off the uh, mushroom assembly. Um, this is just to make the uh, disassembly process easier. You're gonna be fighting against a lot of springs in the valve system. The easiest thing to do is with two wrenches here. And you're gonna place one of the wrenches on top and then one on bottom. And this is just to take off just the top cap. And so the first thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna break it loose. And then after that, it becomes a lot easier. So we'll take this off once it's uh, broken loose, it just comes off by hand. And inside there is going to be the E61 filter screen. Um, I just got a pair of tweezers here just to make it easier to get out. And also inside is the Jaclair. This is gonna get soaked as well since you're gonna have it out anyway. It might be worth soaking that. It's just got a little tiny hole that can get clogged very easily. So next we're gonna take off the mushroom uh, assembly itself here. Um, so you're just gonna get your wrench again. And you're just gonna get that loose. And this is gonna be pretty tight, so you're generally just gonna need the wrench. And if you're concerned at all about scratching or trying to prevent as much scratching as you can, the main thing here is either to make sure the adjustable wrench fits perfectly into the grooves here. Um, you can also use masking tape or a towel as well. Um, and that just protects against the stainless steel here. Yeah, and then inside the uh, mushroom housing assembly, uh, you're gonna see the top brew valve and the spring. So we're gonna just take out the spring and the top brew valve here. Um, a tweezer or even just a pick will be good to get this out. So there's the spring. And there's the top brew valve. You'll see here, um, you know, a new one will look nice and shiny. We'll have brass color to it. This one's kind of discolored here. Um, and then inside there, we'll, you'll see the gasket. And in, that's where it's gonna wear out. So the next step in this process um, is you're going to lift the brew lever up. And the main reason I do that is because of the spring inside here. That's just to remove any tension inside there. Cause when you remove this piece, if you have spring tension, it's just gonna pop out. Um, so we're just trying to prevent that. So to get the bottom piece removed, you're just gonna get the adjustable wrench again, and uh, you're gonna get this loosened here. This can be pretty tight, so you're just gonna wanna break that loose. I know it's a hammer. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, you're gonna actually take this, you're gonna put the wrench on where the groove is at, and it, once you get tension on there, you can actually take the rubber mallet and just give it a tap, and that usually breaks a lot of tight fittings loose. Um, it's just a quick uh, show of force because leverage usually is, uh, doesn't work as well. And so once the assembly is out, you're gonna have the pre-infusion valve and the spring. And then also inside this assembly, you're gonna have this little cap piece and that just holds the uh, spring in place. And so also inside this assembly is going to be the drain valve here. Um, you have a couple different options for disassembly on this one. You could try taking it off while it's still attached here. Um, but, uh, but there's no real specific way because either way is gonna be the same instructions. Okay, so what you're gonna do with this valve is you do have this groove here and then this groove here, and you're gonna need two wrenches and you're just gonna put them on either side. And then you can basically press, you know, opposite force on each one just to break this loose. And so once that comes out, there's gonna be a spring inside here as well. So spring, and then the drain valve. 
so the next step we're gonna take is remove the brew lever uh, and this will get us access to the camshaft assembly. So in order to remove the brew lever, you're gonna just take a flat blade and just unscrew this little assembly here. And once the brew lever is removed, inside is gonna be a little crush washer. There's gonna be a little spring here and that will be where the camshaft gaskets are. The spring is gonna be pretty, pretty heavily loaded too. Um, this, this is probably one of the more difficult pieces to put back on. Uh, so the next step in this to get the access to the camshaft and then the camshaft gaskets uh, the first part is you're just gonna to wanna to remove the fitting that's on the outside here. And in order to do that, you're gonna need two wrenches. And the first wrench is gonna go on the fitting closest to the group head. And the second one's gonna go on the one on the outside of it here. And once they're both on there, it's gonna act kinda of like scissors. You're gonna kind of brace against both of them and you can kind of squeeze. And that'll break the one on the outside right here. and then that piece will unscrew. So once this piece is unscrewed, you're just gonna take it out, and inside there is going to be the spring, and then again, another little stem valve that just holds the spring in place, and this also presses against the camshaft gaskets. So the next part of this, again with the adjustable wrench, you're gonna take off the rest of the camshaft assembly. So once the assembly is completely unscrewed, you're just gonna take it out and inside here, you're going to see the camshaft valve. And then you will also see inside here, the camshaft gaskets. So now all the pieces of the E61 assembly that we're gonna be replacing are removed. Um, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to take some hot water and kefiza. And you're just gonna to wanna to soak a lot of those components. Um, they can get pretty grimy on the inside. Um, this one is pretty clean, uh, but uh, so yeah, you're just gonna to to soak all these pieces and springs uh, before putting it back together so everything's nice and clean. So once you have everything uh, cleaned up and you're ready to put it back together, um, my first suggestion would be to put the, uh, the camshaft valve back in. So I'm just gonna show you how to get these swapped out uh, and then we can get it back in and installed. So the first part is going to actually be just to slide out the camshaft valve. And then you're gonna take the Teflon gasket off. This is gonna be the large Teflon gasket. And then inside here is going to be the camshaft gaskets. Um, and so you can take uh, like a dental pick um, with, a, with a slight angle to get inside there just to push them out. So they both came out, they're stuck together there. So once those gaskets are removed and you're gonna put in the new camshaft gaskets, um, it's always good just to put a little bit of molly coat on them before putting them back in. And it doesn't really take much, but the molly coat just helps with longevity um, and to help them seal much quicker when they're getting installed. So you'll take the little compression piece here and that just kind of pushes the gaskets back in. And then next, you're gonna put the camshaft valve. Uh, same thing, you're just gonna to wanna to put a little molly coat on here um, that just helps them slide in easier. And then uh, you'll put a little bit on the, uh, the edge here as well, and that just helps with the lubrication against the other two valves that are gonna be in the assembly. So once you have the camshaft valve installed and the camshaft gaskets along with the large Teflon gasket, um, when you're going to install the camshaft valve, it is gonna go in a specific direction. Uh, in this case, the cam will be going in the down position, which is if the brew lever was just perpendicular. And so this is the position the cam will be going in. So you're going to insert the camshaft valve into the E61 assembly here, again, in the down position for the brew lever. We're just gonna make it finger tight right now because once the rest of the assembly is in place, the wrench will uh, take care of the rest. Uh, so the next step will be to add the uh, spring assembly with the, with the valve that pushes against the camshaft gaskets. And then you're gonna put the cap piece back on here. Uh, again, the, this, is, this is gonna be a really tight spring. Um, you're kinda just gonna have to press against it and get the thread started with your hand. 
uh, and then you can uh, use the wrench to tighten it down the rest of the way. So once the camshaft assembly is reinstalled, the next step will be the brew lever. Um, so again, with the brew lever, you're gonna have the piece itself, the crush washer, and then the screw. So once you have the camshaft valve in place and you're gonna get the brew lever installed, you're just gonna put the brew lever installed in the down position. Um, this will just help confirm that the camshaft is in the correct place. So once that screw is screwed in, you can kind of just test the brew lever. Just make sure it goes up and down. You can even look inside the mushroom assembly as well too, because you should see the camshaft valve inside there and you can see it moving up and down. So the next uh, piece to replace here is going to be the E61 assembly. So again, in just a specific order, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're not fighting against any springs when you're screwing uh, pieces back in. So since the brew lever is in the down position, it will not fight against the spring that we're gonna be reinstalling up here in the E61. So the next piece you're gonna install is the top brew valve in the spring. Uh, it's gonna be in this order. Uh, and before installation, you're just gonna add just a tiny bit of molly coat to the gasket of the top brew valve. And then just for good measure, I always just add a little bit to the spring. Um, sometimes, you know, especially after you clean it and everything like that, uh, they can get pretty tight. So it's just good to have everything lubricated. So the next piece is going to be the uh, E61 mushroom. Uh, we have the large Teflon gasket, the new one installed on here. Uh, and you're just gonna put it in place push down and just screw in just to get it started. And then once you start feeling the spring tension, you can use uh, an adjustable wrench. So once the uh, E61 uh, housing is reinstalled, um, it's good to always just check your work as you go. You don't wanna get everything reinstalled and realize you put something in wrong or it's just not functioning right. So just lifting the brew lever, you can feel the tension of the spring uh, and that just kind of helps verify that everything's in place. The E61 is now installed, um, and so you're gonna want to put the cap gasket back on. Um, so this is gonna have the uh, small Teflon cap gasket on this piece, and then you're also going to have the E61 filter screen. Then this goes around the Jaclair that's inside. Now, once the filter screen's in place, you're just gonna screw the top cap back on. And again, with the adjustable wrench, you're just gonna get it around uh, the fitting and you can just use it to tighten the assembly the rest of the way. So uh, before the uh, reinstallation of the pre-infusion chamber, um, you're just gonna wanna make sure the, tef the large Teflon gasket, the old one, is removed. It just sits up right inside here. So you can just kind of get a pick to get it started. Um, it can sometimes fall out during the installation, but uh, you're just gonna wanna make sure that this doesn't get double stacked. So the next step in the process is you're going to reinstall the pre-infusion chamber. Um, and so the first piece you're gonna put in is the stem valve here. And then you're gonna put in the spring and the pre-infusion valve. Um, before reinstallation, just like with the top brew valve, we're gonna add a little molly coat here. And you're just gonna add some to the spring as well. And so with the stem valve installed, it's gonna be spring, and then pre-infusion valve next with the gasket facing up. And then you're gonna add your large Teflon gasket. And so this is gonna get pressed up inside uh, a little groove that's inside the E61 assembly here. And then before you actually screw this in, you're gonna wanna lift up that brew lever just to get the camshaft valve out of the way of this spring tension. So once the pre-infusion chamber is installed, the next step in this process will be to reinstall the drain valve. Now, the reason why I didn't install the drain valve while the pre-infusion chamber was out is because it is pretty difficult to fight against all the springs uh, with the assembly out. And it's just nice with everything kind of tightened down, um, you don't have to fight against too many pieces here. 
So in terms of the drain valve, um, you're gonna have this little sprayer here that goes at the bottom. You're gonna have uh, the spring and you're gonna have the drain valve itself again. And the gasket will be facing up. You're just gonna add Molly Coat to the drain valve and the spring. And the drain valve will be installed in this order, spring, drain valve, gasket facing up. And then again, the brain lever, you'll just wanna make sure it's up and out of the way there. And the only bit of advice that I could really say for this one, just because it is a pretty tight spring, um, is you're gonna, you can kind of have your hand below it like this, and you can press against the spring while you use your other hand to turn it. And this is just to start the threading. And then, so once you kind of have the threading started, you then are going to use an adjustable wrench just to get it tightened down the rest of the way. So now that everything's reassembled on the E61 uh, assembly, the next step that you're gonna wanna do is just check for any leaks. Uh, the easiest way to do that right away is to do a back flush. Um, this will just be done while the machine is cold. Um, just testing this while it's hot, it just makes it harder to fix any of the leaks. Um, so you're just gonna do it right away. So you're gonna need a port filter with a back flush disc, uh, just doesn't have any holes in it, so no water can come through. So that way you can build up pressure in the group head. So we're just gonna get this installed. Right, turn the machine on. Then you're gonna lift the brew lever. You're gonna see pressure build up in the brew pressure gauge. Um, and uh, we're just gonna give it a few seconds just to build up some pressure in the group head. And then once I lower the lever, you're gonna see a jet of water come out here. Oh, so you can see here, we do got a leak a little bit right here. So we're gonna shut that off. You see the jet of water come through, so we got plenty of pressure. So we just gotta fix this leak. So just tighten down the assembly. Retry. So I'm not seeing any leaks here. So we can lower it. There we go. So that concludes everything for the E61 rebuild kit. Thanks for watching, and if you wanna go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more tech videos.